Hey, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Street talking other stuff. Mike, Mad Dog, Magnati. Nice to have you on this. Well, I was going to say fine Monday morning, and it is fine, but it's cold. Okay, so it's not as fine as it could be. So let's give it a few months. But hey, nice to have you with you. Nice to be here today. But got a real good show for you today. But just a few things beforehand. You know, we're still dealing with uh, Christmas presents. I had to take a pair of pants back that somebody gave me because they were too tight. And when I brought them back to the store, the clerk said, well, yeah, you can return them, but what's the reason? I said, well, they hurt my feelings. And my daughter, she had to take a last minute trip down to, uh, you know, southern part of the, the United States the other day, and there was nobody to stay home to take care of her dog. So um, she was gonna take the dog with her, so she called the airline to find out what she had to do. And the airline said, well, you have to put your dog in a crate that's big enough for the dog to stand up, lay down, roll over and turn all the way around. And this was a last minute flight my daughter was gonna take and she said, no, wait a minute. There's no way I can teach him how to do that by tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, when I was a cop, <laughs> I, I love these stories about stopping people. I stopped this guy for speeding through a school zone once, okay, which I have strong feelings about, obviously. You don't speed through school zones when kids are there. So I was talking to the guy and kind of trying to straighten him out, and he looked at me and said, hey, officer, you know, if I knew you were just going to criticize me, I never would have pulled over. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the economy, you can tell it's getting better. When people are making payments on not only their cars and their houses, but also on their iPhones. But hey, all right, we'll stick around. We've got a good show. Now, I've got someone here today who fits into the category that if you don't know him, you should. So street talk and other stuff. Mike Mad Doug Magnati, stick around. We'll be right back. Just as when it went on the air, Steve, NCW Life is live now on Facebook. Hey, how is about that? We're live, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm Dan Koontz, your host for the next hour. Every weekday, starting at 7 o'clock. Get ready for a bunch of news that's coming your way. Here's what's happening around North Central Washington. We'll have a rundown of all your local, regional, and statewide news. You can also find more on our website at ncwlife.com. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. That's Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on NCW Life News. Hi, I'm Cordell Schroeder, owner of East Wenatchee Mobile Storage. If you're thinking about making a move anytime soon, check out the East Wenatchee Mini Storage brand new mobile storage service. They drop it off at your location, you pack it, and they pick it up and store it in their protected warehouse at East Wenatchee for as long as you need. When you're ready, they'll drop it off at your new home or office. East Wenatchee Mini Storage is excited to offer this brand new service to our region. Call 509-884-8643 or find us on the web at ewministorage.com. It's a little scary. You never know who might be outside. But we feel safer inside knowing our home is being monitored by a local company. I can check our alarm from just about anywhere. So when we get home, I know it's safe. Protect your family and save money with a local company. Switch your current security monitoring to Guardian Services from Localtel. Call Guardian Security from Localtel now or visit localtel.net to learn more. Okay, street talking and other stuff, Mike, Mad Dog, Magnetti. Now, hey, Wenatchee Valley College has been an institution in our community since 1939. And my guest today, Mr. David Davin. David, nice to have you. Thanks for having me. David is the executive director of the Wenatchee Valley College Foundation. That's right. And we're happy to have you. I'm happy to be here. Well, good. So, yeah. okay, just briefly, because I don't want to get into the foundation stuff yet, but sure. what is the foundation's goal and purpose? The foundation's goal is to advance the mission of the college. So okay. we're here to support students, support the college's programs, help them do a better job of offering high quality education to the whole area. And that is the mission, high quality education for people locally, right? That's the Great. mission, yep. Okay. And we have the biggest service district in the whole region, so we're in the whole state actually, so we're, we serve as a big area. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah, all well, the way up to, you know, Canadian border, right. so. Well, that's what you do professionally. Just tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, 
Tell people who you yeah. are. You well, know, I, not I, just what you do, but who you are. So. <laughs> well, I moved up here in July yeah. uh, with my husband Douglas, and uh, we uh, came from LA, where we were living. Douglas was living with me there for a couple of years, but we—he's originally from Brazil, right. so um, he's a bit of a fish out of water here. But we're—we've both taken to it. We love it up here. Cool. Yeah. Well, I do. I want to add, Douglas, um, David's husband was. The bailiff in Twelve Angry Men, if you happen to see that, and he did a great job playing a New. I mean, he looked yeah. like a New York bailiff, so he just had that attitude. He had so an accent good. I didn't even know where that came from. Yeah, yeah. No, it was he good. did a great job. It's good. All right, so what else? So you moved up here from LA. How long have you guys been married? So we've been married for a year now. Okay, just celebrated our one year anniversary, yeah. and um, we uh, moved. Up, we were looking. I have roots in the Pacific Northwest. I lived in Vancouver, Washington, for a number of years. Okay. went to high school down at Skyview High School All down right. there. And uh, so I was a Seahawks fan from, from very early on, and I kept that going since L.A. didn't have a football team. Yeah. And um, we're, I was looking to move back to the Pacific Northwest. Me and Douglas had a lot of conversations about it because I really just love the, the, the environment up in the Northwest. Okay. I, I kind of missed it and the people and everything. And we, uh, I found this job in Wenatchee just online and didn't, couldn't pick Wenatchee off a map at the, when, really? I first, when I okay. first saw it. I, I hadn't heard of it, didn't know where it was. Yeah. And uh, but the more it's I looked at right where it needs to be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the more I looked into it, the more I was like, this is this is a very unique yeah. place. And that's the the more I've experienced it, the more that's come to be true. I mean, there really is no place like like I think that's Wenatchee. true. Did you come and visit before you got the job, or did you? I did. You know, yeah. Okay. When right. I came up for the interview, they they did they they didn't just hire me off the phone. Mm -hmm. They uh, they they brought me up and. I looked around, but Douglas was the adventurous one. He he came up and took my word for it. And, really? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, what's the time of year when you first were here? We know? got we actually arrived on July fourth. <laughs> oh, so it came we, the good 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 part. It was a good, good time of year. Yeah, yeah. It was a good and it was a yeah. good day to come too with the fireworks and there was a lot of just people on the streets having fun. It was it was a good day. Oh, cool. So yeah. All right. Well, this is a heavyweight position, you know, ex executive. It is director yeah. of the foundation. What's your education experience preparing you for this? Yeah. So, I went to um, USC, University of Southern California. Okay. All right. um, that's where I did my undergrad, and um, and what also did my grad work. What was your there. major? I did uh, English and American Studies double major, okay. and a All film right. minor. So I had a lot going on, and um, something I still do for as a hobby. I still <coughs> make short films. I actually had one oh, recently cool. that was uh, a couple of years ago that we made that was won some awards in the festivals and oh. things like that. Yeah. Well, if you're ever looking for a, <coughs> a sexy leading man, <laughs> on me you should not depend. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do all the behind the camera work. I've never yeah. done really acting. No, you should give it a try. Douglas is the actor in the family. Well, Doug, this was his first time in a live play with Twelve exactly. Men, wasn't he? Yeah. 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 Has he got the bug? Oh yeah, I think you're going to see him. You'll see him in something else. Oh cool. Yeah. Well, you should give it a shot too. So. I will. I think I will. I was like, if Douglas can do this, I, I think I can do it too. Okay. So how'd you get this job? What happened? You know. So they were looking for a new executive director, and right. I think mm -hmm. that it's a real pivotal moment for the for the college. They. Uh, they uh, they're on the verge of, of of you know replacing Wells Hall, which is kind of the heart of the college. It's right. where you if you take math or science or you know um, English or um, you know f uh, English as a second language or anything like that, it's you're probably in that building. So it's kind of the heart of the college. They're on the verge of replacing that with a brand new state of the art building. Um, obviously, you, you probably know most people uh, I think know that uh, they launched two bachelor degree programs. So no, I did not know that. Yeah, no, we, was we not have aware first of that. first bachelor degree programs, uh, four year degree programs. Okay. Uh, in nursing and engineering. Oh no, they got. Oh, I thought you said they lost. No, they launched. Launched. They them. launched. Sorry. Launched. Yep. Okay. And it's so not the way he talks, folks. It's <laughs> my hearing. Okay. It just it's not quite the same as it used to be. Yeah, and so they, no. you know, it's it's. It's a it's a point where we're mm. trying to see, I think, as a community, how much are we going to support education? And I saw that right. and saw that I would play a role in that, and that's what really attracted to me. Cool, so, good. And then just looking into it, just the our valley, our future, um, and I think that this community is really wrestling with where it wants to go. Now it's kind of at a crossroads. Where does it want to go for the future? You mean higher education wise, or just in general? Everything so, yeah. wise. Yeah, I think the our valley, our future really covers the economy, education, okay. you know, culture arts, everything, and, and trying to decide what's this community's identity going to be in the future. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's unique to find a community wrestling with that and doing it so openly and, and having a kind of community-wide conversation. And that's one of the things that attracted me here. When I saw Our Valley, Our Future, I was like, this is a, this is a part, I want to be a part of this conversation. Oh, I want cool. to help advance Good. the mission. 
Okay, so are you reaching out into other areas other than your professional work? Are you on any of these boards or advisory committees or I'm, anything like that? I'm taking that? a look. I want to be on something else, that I, okay. but I'm not sure what it is yet. I've, I've visited a couple of rotaries, um, and uh, I'm just keeping an eye, eye open, and I want to choose the right thing. Okay. I am involved in the Spectrum, which is a local LGBT organization yeah. um, that uh, is doing really good work for, for the LGBT folks in this good. area. So um, that's something that is important to both me and Douglas. And actually, we were just volunteering uh, this last uh, on Saturday uh, over at Eastmont for the Queer Straight Alliance over there at the high school, yeah. raising funds for them to you know have movie nights or go on a field trip or something. All right, cool, good. Yeah. Okay, what's the history of the foundation? I mean, how did this get started? You know, I don't know if the college has always always had a foundation at this. They position. haven't. So okay. yeah, the the college was founded in 1939, mm -hmm. if my memory serves me correctly. And then the um, and actually this was the college was founded by the community. You know, it was there was fifty some, you know, donors that got together and and figured out a way to make this happen. And they right. would have classes in the high school and then at the um, Wells House. And it wasn't until the '60s that the state got involved and said, you know, they started getting state funding, which is a good thing. And then um, in 1973, the foundation launched to help support the mission and oh, okay. provide scholarships mainly for the students, and then help with uh, programmatic support and things All like right. that. Yeah. So, how many directors have they had? You know, before you. That I so, don't know. Okay. Quite a number. All right. I'm, it seems like I'm meeting executive, former executive directors all the time. Really? Okay. <laughs> so what specifically are your duties? I mean, how would you, first of all, not specifically first, but generally how would you describe it? And then we'll talk a little bit more specific about well, what we're, you're doing. Well, we're, I, you know, I'm, I, I deal, I work with the board. So the board is uh, the college, know, the, the college foundation board. board. Foundation so board. we have oh, our own okay. foundation okay. board. The foundation is a, is a, its own 501c3. It's its own separate entity, um, and we have a good close relationship with the college. But uh, uh, we have our own board. Um, right now, it has 18 members on it, and mm -hmm. they're they're a great group of people. 18. Yeah. We're actually building up to 25, okay, so if anyone say, wants to be a, a board member. How do you make any decisions with 18 people? Well, the, the thing is, we're surprising. I think we're a really well-oiled machine. I mean, they're, they've been great. Obviously, the, okay. the, me getting up to speed so fast is because of my board. They're great. Oh, all right. And Rick yeah. Vile is the president. And oh, I know Rick. Yeah, yeah. he's the president. Yeah, good. Uh, Carmen Vassar is the vice president. We've okay. got some old timers like Ron Lodge. He's been, I think he served on the board. No, Ron too. I yeah. know half these people. Yeah. No, I'm not interested. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want me on any board. Okay. I was gonna. I have a letter as, here. As, I can give it to you. As if I'm even qualified. <laughs> I mean, come on. My <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, but yeah, I mean, and so really working with them, deciding the strategic direction we want to go, right. managing our assets. We have over 12 million dollars in assets now. Which is a Ooh. which is a good thing. The economy's Ooh. been doing well, so you know, majority of that money is invested and, and growing oh, over cool. time, which is All good. Right. And we, you know, co-invest with the community foundation. They're yeah. a great partner of ours. Yeah. Um, but then just really, uh, you know, steering the ship. I mean, it's everything from one minute I'll be doing public relations to uh, the next minute I'll be doing marketing to then you know writing donor letters. Uh, making sure that we're treating our donors right, making sure the students are getting the right scholarships, yeah. you know, looking at what the programs we're putting on. Um, we just launched this new program called Council of Champions, mm -hmm. which is uh, just a, a group of people that really like the college and want to see it doing well and don't necessarily have the time or, or desire to be on a board, right. but uh, want to champion our cause and help us spread the word about the good things we're doing at the, for the college. Um, so, you know, looking at programs like that. We have an alumni network, so okay, cool. contacting with our alumni. Good. How many alumni do you have? We have over 100,000, but wow. we don't have a way to get in contact with most of them yet. Ooh. We're working on that. Okay. Something right. that's a big priority of ours, because a lot of alumni have gone through the college, probably had a good experience for the yeah. most part, and, and then have never heard anything from us again. So we're really, tr that's one of our priorities in the next year or so, is to try to get in contact with a lot of alumni. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay, street talk and other stuff. We were talking to Mr. David Davin. He is the executive director of the Wenatchee Valley College Foundation, and we're going to get into a little more of the specifics about what the found, you know, background of the foundation, what it's for, what you're planning on doing with those twelve million dollars. <laughs> so, but hey, street talk and other stuff. We're going to take a quick break. Stick around. We will be right back. So.
This is TV. This is TV Set Free. TV Everywhere from Localtel sets you free to watch what you want, where you want. Catch your favorite networks, including live TV, ready to watch on any web-connected device for no extra charge. That's TV set free. Enjoy the extra value Localtel delivers with TV Everywhere. Visit Localtel.net and sign up today. Ladies and gentlemen, this is State Representative Kerry Condotta inviting you to check out our newest show on the NCW Life channel. We call it the 12th District. Each week, we'll be taking an in-depth look at various political issues that affect our area, our state, and the world. We'll be featuring local and statewide experts on the subject matter at hand. Please join us weekly for the 12th District with yours truly, Kerry Condotta. Check your channel guide for times or go to ncwlife.com for details. Okay, thanks for coming back. Street Talk and Other Stuff with Mike Mad Dog Magnati and Mr. David Davin, who is the executive director of the Wenatchee Valley College Foundation. Happy to have you. Yeah, okay, happy to be here. Let's get into a little more specifics about what you do, what the foundation does, progress you're making, that type of thing. Now, you yeah. mentioned you guys have $12 million in assets. Yeah, and you know, most of the, I wish. I, <laughs> I mean, I'm a. It, now I'm a, you know, I'm, is that an impressive amount or? It's an impressive okay, amount. Okay, all It right. is. It makes so. us the fourth largest uh, nonprofit in the region. Oh, all right, cool. And um, good. you know, it's it's grown all the time. We have good investments. You know, a lot of that. It's not just money that we can do whatever we want with, and for good reason. Oh, it's, of course not. These are donors yeah. that you know have restricted their funds for certain uses. Usually, mostly scholarships. A vast majority of that money is uh, held for scholarships, really? okay. which goes directly to students, cool. um, which is the way it should be. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, that's you know, when you hear twelve million dollars, assets, you think, okay, well, they're rich; they can do whatever they want. But that's just not the case. We need a lot of support every year to keep keep moving the ball forward. Okay. Well, see, I ran a nonprofit for a while, and I think I had. Oh, did you? I didn't know. Yeah, that. ten or fifteen dollars in assets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, an adoption agency, but. Oh, okay. But okay, but most of that money really is for scholarships. That's yeah, what. The, oh, okay. It is. It's yeah. not for capital projects or. No. Oh, no, interesting. Mo, mo, a vast majority of the twelve million that we hold is for scholarships. Okay. Yeah. All right. And a lot, you know, because the capital projects, that money will come in, and usually it gets goes right back out because we need to to build the building or you know pay sure. the construction workers things like that. Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah. Okay, progress. So know. we've made a lot of progress. You know, in the last, uh, you know, I'm, I'm stepping into a role where luckily a lot of things have been teed up and, and they've, they've made a lot of progress. You know, sure. Jim Richardson, the president, has been there 12 years now. Um, it's really uh, unique to have a, an institution with a president that's uh, had such a long tenure, which it's a very, it's a, it's a big boon to the institution because it helps them navigate the grant, the grants and the um, you know state bureaucracies and figure out how to get things approved and mm -hmm. we probably wouldn't have bachelor degrees without you know Jim Richardson um, being there so it's been a big boon and he's done a lot of great work only 10 years ago the Latino population at the college was under 15 percent now it's up. okay that was 10 years ago yeah okay well, in right. 10 years time they've gone <laughs> from that to now being 47 percent I believe it is oh, just wow. under half Excellent. Which mirrors, cool. which is actually a little bit higher than the than what the you know makeup of the of the whole population here in the right. region, but it mirrors more of the population now. Now it's it's becoming more representative of what our community looks like, and that's great. We want we want uh, all populations here to take advantage of the education that's available to them here. Yeah. Okay. So they've made a lot of good progress, um, and then of course launching the two new bachelor degrees with two more on the way. So nursing and engineering are the um, uh, four year degrees that we have. And we've got two more coming in, computer science and education, that okay. they're going out for accreditation. All right, on. well, nursing I can see, but um, not that that was a wrong choice, but what made you choose engineering for the Believe it or not, uh, to one, me, so. it was the same kind of question. Believe yeah. it or not, the industries were clamoring for this. This is one hmm. of the biggest needs in the region is engineers for the PUD and all of the industrial work that goes on here. Um, okay. they, they really need people that can do engineering. And oh, that's it's, interesting. It's okay. apparently hard yeah. to recruit engineers to the region. Um, that uh, it's just for whatever reason that's a key area where it's difficult to get people to to move here for so they decided let's train our own let's ho let's home grow them and uh, and get the industries the uh, the, ed the educated you know people we need okay now doesn't when you change the educational focus and you start having four-year degrees instead of just AA degrees that also requires you to um, change the background and you know yeah, you know the educators that you have because 
they have to be people with higher degrees as well. Absolutely. They? So. Yeah. They, so it, it, it does require, um, you know, we, ha we have to find people usually with PhDs to be able right. to teach those kind of programs. And uh, the recruitment on that is, uh, is, is more difficult. And, uh, you know, we have to do national searches to find mm -hmm. these people. And, um, but I think it's good to bring that kind of talent in. Sure. And, to, um, and, you know, it's a challenge. But, uh, you know, our, our vice president for instruction, Dr. Carly Schiffner, Okay. Uh, she's uh, she's risen to the challenge. She's a she's another stalwart at the college, along with Jim Richardson. That's just she's really the reason that these programs launched and and is uh, out there making sure it's happening. And they're doing it, you know, with with string and duct tape as as needed, right? You know, because it's the state funding has it's never recovered from the Great Recession. Yeah. You know, the, it's the state funding is is it's it's tough. It's a tough situation with the amount of funds that at. Uh, that we get and we have to make a lot of things happen and credit to everyone there, they right. do it. Okay, so how many, <coughs> what's the staff level? I mean, how many people actually work for the college? I believe it's just so. over 400. Really? Is, is what I heard and that includes full-time and part-time. Yeah. Um, and that's faculty and staff and, you know, the janitors, everyone yeah, that makes the staff, place right, the place exactly. run, so, okay. yeah. Cool. That's yeah. you know, quite. A, that's a lot more than I would have figured. So. Yeah, it's a it's a big community. Yeah, actually, it's a real family kind of atmosphere. Yeah, my son-in-law is a part-time worker. Oh, okay. He works in the music department in the recording studio. Oh, so. and what a great gem yeah. that is the yeah. the music and arts center. You know, sure. the the recording studio and there's state of the art. And I think a, a lot of people in the community. For, I'm surprised they don't even know that it exists. So we've got a state of the art facility there for music. Well, they and had arts. a TEDx talk there a while back, which Did I they? think gave it some. Um, you know, before you and David, I'm uh, sorry, before you and Douglas got here, they gave it some, uh, you know, publicity. So. Yeah. Okay. So plans for the future. Well, you, uh, we've, we've got we've got some ambitious plans coming up. Right now, the, the, the college has just finished its strategic planning, mm -hmm. and the foundation is doing our strategic planning. So what that that's just a fancy way to say we're looking at the next five years. What do we right. want to do? And um, you know, when we look at the next five, and I'm looking maybe even five, ten years, we're at a state where we're like I said earlier. We're we might be replacing Wells Hall soon. You know, the state if the capital budget ever gets passed sure. through the state, we'll have the funds for that. Most a majority of the funds for that, we're going to need to ask the community for a little bit of support on that as well. Okay. And then we've got we've got ourselves teed up for another building right after that potentially. You know, all this could change based on politics and everything. Right. But um, ba Bacher Hall, which is our kind of skilled trades, you know, welding, auto tech, agriculture, um, those kinds of skilled trades that you can get. Uh, we might get a state-of-the-art replacement for that. So that all could happen within the next 10 years, where you're looking at two brand new state-of-the-art facilities to go along with the new buildings we already have, the Music and Art Center, Rec Center, Wenatchee Hall, which are all beautiful state-of-the-art new buildings. Um, and then you're looking at a, at a place where we're able to offer high-quality education in these brand new facilities um, that rivals, uh, to be honest, any of the four years. I yeah. mean, it, it, and then we're going to be having you know, four-year degrees, um, hopefully in a host of different areas because we plan to keep launching them and the foundation wants to support that. And then on top of that, one of the things we're looking at is if we can offer a promise of some sort to the local students. So any, anyone that goes to a local high school here, can we promise you that your first year at Wenatchee, Wenatchee Valley College is going to be free and taken okay, care of? Right. Um, and we're looking at how we can do that. Well, and you I, already have a plan in progress, the Running Start program. Yeah, which is the, part, the Running which Start is a grand, great... My grandson... Yep. You know? And that, that's a growing program. Yeah. It's already uh, already a quarter of the <clears throat> quarter of the college is made up of running start okay. students, which is really impressive. Well, David, I really thank you for being here. Yeah. Okay, good thank information. You. I appreciate that. Well, Mr. David Davin, he's the executive director of the Wenatchee Valley College Foundation. And you know what I most liked about the impression you gave today? Your passion for what you're doing. I do you have know, a lot of passion. This for isn't it. just a job for you, is it? It's not. It's a mission. No, it is, and that's I appreciate that. That's really good. That's just it's cool that we have people like this and. I'm glad I got to introduce you to him, but hey, street dog and other stuff. Mike Mad Dog Magnati got something else coming up in a little bit, so you stick around. We will be right back. If you are looking for dependable car service and repair, visit the good guys at Quick Lube and Tune. They've been keeping cars and trucks in the Wenatchee Valley running smooth for 35 years. Quick Lube and Tune is your hometown shop for a 10-minute oil change, complete tune-ups, alignments, brakes, mufflers, air conditioning service, and more. Get more life out of your vehicle by bringing it to the local guys you can trust at Quick Lube and Tune on South Wenatchee Avenue. 
ladies of the Wenatchee Valley, do you know the secret of receiving the perfect gift for your birthday, anniversary, or Christmas? We have the answer for you at Collins Fashions. Come in and fill out a wish list. You can choose from beautifully crafted jewelry, handbags, and luggage from Brighton, stylish wallets and handbags from Lotus, cozy sweaters from Icelandic, zip fleece from Tommy Bahama, fashions from Joseph Rivkop, and Collins gift cards. Our little elves can contact your loved ones and share your wish list. Complimentary gift wrap and amazing service at Collins Fashions in downtown Wenatchee. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Channel. I'm Eric Grandstrom with NCW Life Sports. I'm NCW Life News Director Steve Hare. Catch us on Local Tell Channel 12. You can watch us on Charter Channel 19 or stream us live on ncwlife.com. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Where we cover the local high schools, the Wenatchee Wild, and the pro teams out of Seattle. On Saturday, we have a 90% chance of rain. Catch it all right here on the NCW Life Channel. My name is Robert Duff, current and previous occupation is architect, engineer, and a lawyer. Grew up here in Washington, born in Moses Lake. When I first came to CVCH, I uh, was looking for a place to get some dental work done. And I was really impressed with the people at the counter. I mean, they were just on top of it. It only took her like 15 minutes to do the job. I didn't feel anything. The technology is so great, you don't even realize you're at the dentist. These people are so professional. I would have any one of these people in my home for dinner. These people are family. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming back. Now, I just want to do something a little differently today. I want to speak a little bit about the article that was in the Wenatchee World um, in Sunday's paper, specifically about additional information being released about the tragic shooting we had that ended a young man's life out in uh, the Albertsons area back in July. Uh, you know, in social networking and just in the public in general, the police department took a lot of criticism over that. Uh, there was a lot of misinformation put on social networking and for a while there was actually a man standing across the street from the police department with a sign that said stop murdering people. And I'm not going to make any bones about it. This was a tragedy. This was a terrible tragedy. Okay? It was. Anytime something like this occurs, it's just not something that anyone wants to happen. Okay, but I want to mention something appalling but true. What an experienced officer told me when I was first a rookie, uh, we were talking about the use of, well, potential use of deadly force on the job, which uh, police do have to consider. And he said to me, you know, if you ever have to use deadly force, you won't be making the decision. The other person will be making that decision for you. And I'm sorry, that is true, okay? Uh, police officers don't want to resort to deadly force. They do not. I thank God almost Frequently, the fact that my 20 years as a police officer, I did not have to use that alternative or take that alternative. Uh, it wasn't a decision Officer Albert Gonzalez wanted to make. Okay, now, my sympathy and my prayers go out to Matt Folden's family and his friends. Um, I'm sure that in many ways he was a, a great young man. Okay, but they also go out to Officer Albert Gonzalez. This wasn't his choice for it to occur this way, ladies and gentlemen. That is evident, okay? The choice for that young man for his life to be taken was not made by the police officer. The police officer did what he had to do not only to protect himself and to protect you as well. So, again, our prayers go out to all the families involved, our sympathy to those folks. And let's just hope tragedies like this do not occur again. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati. Thanks for checking in. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.